God, whose grace encircles us, wake us with gentleness, with energy, with love on this new day. God, whose strength emboldens us, stir us to fruitfulness, to creativity, to life on this new day. God, whose mercy revives us, breathe into us the gifts of compassion, understanding and kindness on this new day, that in our thinking, our doing and our praying, your kingdom may be known. Psalm 137 By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tor tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs? of the Lord while in a foreign land. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried, tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy 
is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. What a journey it is through the various emotions of this beautiful poetry. Although it is quite tempting to omit the last verses of this psalm, to pretend that the rather bloodthirsty ending fell off the end of the page. The poet speaks communally of a sorrow which is palpable reflecting the distress of those who are in exile, their beloved Zion laid waste. The centre and the source of their joy is gone. And to add insult to injury, those who keep them captive force them to sing songs of joy, to mock their plight. In their hearts there is little worthy of celebration and their harps once used to express praise are now hung upon the trees silent now the scene painted is heartbreaking the poet reminds god of the Edomites who continued to plunder Jerusalem even after the Babylonians had destroyed it in 587 BC. The blessing conferred on both the Babylonians and the Edomites is not one which brings peace and happiness. Instead, this psalm is a reminder that the mighty powers of the world who use those powers to crush freedoms and to oppress humanity will face judgment. In spite of the exile, says the writer, God is still God. And God's kingdom will overcome all attempts to snuff it out. I wonder if the words of that psalm brought comfort to those who had suffered so terribly and comfort to their descendants. I think today as I read it of those who are forced from their own homelands by brutality and how they too must cry out in longing for freedoms to be restored, for the scales of justice to be righted, and for their song to be heard once more. I think too of the call upon my own life to offer comfort and encouragement to those in our towns and our neighbourhoods for whom this is their story, a very real story. And I'm reminded that the things which steal freedoms and fullness of life so often can be encountered in small ways too. The unkind thought or word, the meanness of heart which diminishes and breaks the spirit. The lack of generosity in understanding someone else's story or sorrow. And I remember the judgment of which the poet speaks. It might well be that that judgment will come in all its power on the last day, which is almost too much for me to contemplate. In my daily living, I have a better grasp of the reality of judgment in something which, which was said to me a long time ago. That each time I make a decision to speak harshly, to put someone else down, to close my heart, 
to mock, to think anything other than with kindness. I look a little less like someone who is made in God's image. It's a judgment which is not simply confined to some time later, I believe, but is a present reality in everyday life, no matter where we are, no matter what circumstances we live in. And each day, I pray that God will help me to make the decisions and the choices which will reflect God's own love and mercy. It feels like the only thing I can do. How about you? What does this psalm say to you this morning? Who does this psalm remind you of this morning? And where do you encounter God in its poetry? Amen. and in confidence, let us draw close to the living God, who is more ready to hear us than we are to pray. With those who today struggle to sing their own song in a foreign land, all who are far from home, those who feel excluded from community, and all who are in exile. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. With, lo with those who have lost their song, for whatever reason that might be, those who are living in isolation, in pain, or without somebody they love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. With all those whose song today is painful, bitter, or full of lament, with all who cry out at injustice, who weep for the sorrow of others, who campaign to make fullness of life a reality. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we pray for the coming of God's kingdom, so we offer the hopes, dreams and anxieties of our own hearts to the God who hears us. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the blessing of the God of life, the blessing of the Christ of love, the blessing of the spirit of freedom, go with each one of us into the living of this day. Amen. <laughs>